Hello everyone and welcome. In today's video, I'll go over Wrestler Shaman Talents, Traits and Playstyle for Arena. The goals in this video will teach you about positioning and playstyle as a Wrestler Shaman which will make it easier to keep your team offensive. Wrestler Shaman relies on big heals and totems to keep their targets topped. Your top comps at the moment are DH Warrior, DH Boomy or Shadow Priest Boomy. What comp you want to play will depend on preference. DH Warrior is an aggressive melee cleave with a lot of pressure and defensive cooldowns. Playing this comp as a Wrestle Shaman will require you to play slightly more aggressive with purging, wind shearing and using your CC. DH Boomy has a lot of defensive cooldowns and off healing to help you survive as a team. The comp has a lot of pressure during cooldowns and setups but lower consistent damage than most comps. Shadow Priest Boomy has a lot of spread pressure and is also great defensively since both partners on your team can all feel each other. This allows you to survive until late dampening where you can score the kill or make the enemy healer oom. Your standard build will look like this. Resto Shamans now play with Unleash Life after the recent Riptide nerf which makes Torrent a worse talent choice. Echo of Elements can be played instead of Earth Shield versus heavy purge teams, for example any double shaman setup. Spirit Wolf can be used instead of Earth Grab Totem when expecting to get trained the entire game. There's one PvP talent which should always be picked, which is Rippling Waters. No matter what comp you face, this talent is always considered a good pick. For your other two PvP talents, you will have to pick between Sky Fury Totem, Grounding Totem and Electrocute. When facing a Spell Cleave or Melee Caster team with a lot of CC, you should play with Sky Fury Totem and Grounding Totem. When facing a Melee Cleave, you should play with Electrocute and Grounding Totem. If you're playing with two spellcasters on your team, you should choose to play with Sky Fury Totem and Electrocute instead when facing a melee cleave. The best Azerite traits for a wrestler shaman are Surging Tides and Swelling Streams. Since you now rely less on Red Tide, Swelling Streams has gained more value. You should now stack Haste and Versatility instead of Versatility and Mastery, since you will have to cast a lot more than before because of the Red Tide nerf. Your playstyle will slightly depend on what comp you play. When playing a melee cleave, you will play more aggressive and when playing a melee caster comp or spell cleave, you will play more passively. These playstyle goals apply to nearly every comp and applying them will help improve your gameplay as a wrestler shaman. Positioning Positioning and avoiding CC or swaps is your first goal to keep your team offensive. Poor positioning can result in eating more CC or opening yourself up to swaps, which will make you lose the majority of your games. Jumping into the first clip, we can see how one of the top wrestler shamans, Sidu, is playing at the pillar to avoid both CC and swaps. Playing like this makes it extremely hard for the enemy team to land swaps and CC onto you. Jumping into another game, we can see Sidu is playing at the pillar and the enemy team pushes in to land CC on him. Because the enemy team is pushed in, Sidu can land a capstone on the enemy healer and the enemy team is under pressure instead. Try to position yourself at the pillar as much as possible since it will make it harder for the enemy team to land CC or swaps onto you. When facing a media cleave as a wrestler shaman, you will possibly get trained for the majority of the game. If you play with castles on your team, it's important to kite in their line of sight so they can support you with off heals and CC to peel the enemy team away from you. Jumping into the next clip, Sidu gets swapped to and ends up getting kicked. After coming out of the stun, Sidu uses the gateway and kites in line of sight of his DPS. This way his DPS can slow and CC the enemy team before they connect back onto Sidu, allowing him to recover. In the next game, Sidu gets trained and has to rely on his team to peel for him. Since he got swapped to near his team, his priest can fear the entire enemy team and peel for Sidu. When kiting, make sure you don't kite too far away from your team. If you get caught in a stun without cooldowns or a trinket and your partners are unable to peel for you, it will most likely result in you losing the game. Rotate cooldowns. After poor positioning, the second reason you are losing most of your games is because of cooldowns being overlapped. To avoid this, you and your team should communicate on what cooldowns to use and when to use it. In the next clip, you can hear how to properly communicate with your team to rotate cooldowns. Uh, I'm earthing, 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 okay? They, they broke blind, I still have trinket, I still have trinket, alright? I have a ground for poly. Hodge, 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 you can't stop poly, can't stop poly, can't stop poly, can't stop poly. Uh, something. Go for ring? He doubled, he doubled. Yeah, stay in earthing. Trying to be. Shit. Yeah, no yeah port up, yeah, port up. Yes, yeah, port up, port up. Rogue got knocked down. I could've, I could've stopped that. Okay. Rogue ran into his own ring, because you MC the mage. Holy fuck, you're insane. 
Sidhu managed to sit through a fairly long CC chain, while his team only had to use a minor defensive cooldown. When listening to high rated teams communicate, they all have one thing in common. When calling for cooldowns, you can hear short and direct wording so the team understands that the cooldown has to be used. If your partners ask you if they have to use a cooldown, then for example say ice block or bubble, or simply say no if they don't need to. Good communication with your team can help you to avoid overlapping cooldowns. Most healers prefer to call cooldowns so their DPS can focus on other aspects of the game. Agree with your team on how you will handle using cooldowns to avoid overlapping them. Support your team when there's pressure. When your team has pressure and can score a kill, you should leave the pillar and start playing aggressive to finish the game. Support your team with CC, wind sharing, purging or damage. Jumping into the next clip, you can see how the enemy team is under a lot of pressure. They get caught in a triple fear. Which allows Sidhu to land a hex on the enemy healer to keep the pressure going. In the next clip, we can see how you can assist your team by purging. The enemy team is under pressure and the mage uses his temporal shield. Sidhu purges temporal shield and his team ends up forcing ice block from the mage. In the next clip, we can see how you can assist your team with wind shear. Sidhu lands a hex on the enemy healer and then wind shears the mage so he can't dispel his healer, winning the game for his team. Jumping into the next clip, we can see how you can assist your team with damage during pressure. The enemy team has no cooldowns left and since Sidhu has his team topped, he assists them with damage to finish the game. Knowing when to leave the pillar is important. If you run into the open to play offensive too early, it could result in the enemy team forcing cooldowns from you instead. Leave the pillar just after coming out of a CC chain, or when your team has a bunch of cooldowns left and the enemy team is completely out of cooldowns. Fake cast. After the nerf to Surging Tides and Rip Tide, Resto Shaman has a lot less instant healing. This means you will have to cast a lot more to top your targets and makes you a lot more vulnerable to getting interrupted. Fake casting interrupts will help you to keep your team topped and it's very important after the recent nerfs to the instant healing. Jumping into the next clip, we can see Sidhu's monk is starting to drop some health. The mage still has interrupt ready and Sidhu starts casting and cancels his cast to bait counter spell from the enemy mage. This way he can free cast and keep his team offensive and they manage to force the ice block from the mage instead. Grounding Totem can also be used to avoid having a fake cast when under a lot of pressure, or to immune CC. Keep in mind it can only be used to avoid magical interrupts and CC, and you can still get kicked or stunned by any melee class apart from Demon Hunter or DK. Jumping into the next clip, we can see the enemy team is setting up a CC chain on Sidhu. The enemy Paladin starts moving towards Sidhu to try and land a stun on him, but he manages to use Grounding Totem just before the Paladin connects the stun. This way he can keep his team offensive and turn the pressure around. Practice your fake casting by using short and quick casts to try and bait interrupts from enemy players. Some players kick extremely fast and some players tend to hold on to the kick. Figure this out for yourself during the game and adjust your casting accordingly. That's gonna be it for this guide guys, please leave a plus kill if you enjoyed it and let me know what you think in the comments. And I'll see you guys next time.